Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about few more examples of reptiles. Let us talk about crocodiles. Crocodiles, they have some characteristic features which are of higher organisms like mammals. So those special things, the reptilian characters are same. That means their poikilotherms and all those things are same. But they have four chambered heart. This is a higher character. It is seen in case of birds and mammals. In reptiles in general, we say that the heart has three chambers, that is two auricles, one ventricle and the ventricle shows incomplete partition. So normally we write three chambered heart with incompletely divided ventricle or we also write it as three and a half chambered heart. But in case of crocodiles, the heart is complete four chambered. Another thing which is similar to mammals is they have thecodont dentition. In case of reptiles, the dentition is pleurodont. That means the teeth are partially attached in the socket. Whereas when we say thecodont, that means the tooth is completely fixed in the socket of the bone. So thecodont dentition and four chambered heart, this is a characteristic feature. They are oviparous, they lay eggs, the eggs are cladoic eggs, self-sufficient, that means there is enough yolk content for the complete development of the young one. The next example is of snakes and the first snake that we are talking of is cobra. The scientific name of cobra is Naja Naja and cobra is known for its characteristic hood. This characteristic hood is formed by stretching of the neck region. In snakes, the important thing is that the tongue is bifid. Bifid means the tongue is cut into two parts. So the, the tongue when it comes out, it flickers like this. So it has two lobes or we say it is a bifid tongue. Now what the snakes do is when they put their tongue out in the air, they keep flickering that tongue. All those particles, odoriferous particles or the smell causing particles, they stick to the tongue. When they take this tongue back into the buccal cavity, they touch it to the roof of the buccal cavity. That is the palate region. In this palate region, there is a special sense organ which is called Jacobson's organ and Jacobson's organ helps them to detect this smell, detects smell or chemicals which are in air. In case of snakes, there is one more very important thing is that their eyelids are immobile. The eyelids do not move. Normally, animals have eyelids which move or blink. But in case of snakes, the eyelids are not moving. And that is why it, is, it appears as if if the snake looks at us, it is because it is not blinking, it is sort of capturing an image. So that is a misperception that they capture an image. They are able to recall the faces of people, but that is not the case. It is only because they do not have the eyelids which are mobile. So that gives an impression of that thing. Another important thing about the snakes is they have some long teeth which are used to inject the venom and these teeth are known as fangs. It is a typical reptile and reptiles have polyphyodont dentation. That means the teeth 
they regrow as many times as they fall off. So, so if these poisonous fangs they fall off while attacking then these fangs are going to regrow. Sometimes some people break the fangs also if they have to catch the snake. So they break the fangs but the fangs are going to regrow and these are modified maxillary teeth. The poison gland they are modified salivary glands and these salivary glands which are modified into poison glands they have a duct which goes through this fang. So if we say, say this is the fang or a tooth then there is a duct which comes here and opens at the tip of this fang and at the posterior side it is connected to the salivary gland. So when this salivary gland releases the chemical that is the poison then it is injected into the body of the prey. The poison can be a neurotoxin or it could be hemolytic. In case of cobra it is a neurotoxin that means it damages CNS. It damages central nervous system or CNS. In other uh, snakes it could be hemolytic uh, poison also and these, this poison is a protein. As we are talking about the snake there are some other snakes like vipers, crates, rat snake, rattlesnake. These are all poisonous and then there is one which is python. Rat snake is viviparous. The snake is viviparous snake. That means it gives birth to the young ones. One example that is Tiflina brahmina. It is the smallest Indian snake and the most important thing about this Tiflina is that it shows parthenogenesis. We know parthenogenesis is a method of reproduction in which the organism develops from an unfertilized egg. The interesting part in Tiflina is that the female snake lays eggs and these eggs without fertilization develop into females. These females grow again lay eggs that means here there are no males. So it is only females laying eggs without fertilization the eggs developing into only females. This type of parthenogenesis is known as Thelitoki where the females lay eggs give uh, and these eggs develop by parthenogenesis into again females. So naturally we do not find males in case of Tiflina. So these are some interesting examples of the class Reptilia. Now in the next part we will take up the next class that is of the birds.